uh, I do thank God for all of you and uh, for those of you in whom I hear um, for the very first time I do thank God for you as well I so 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 appreciate you so appreciate you so thank God for you I so honor you um, I so I so celebrate you thank God for you thank God for you thank God for you Thank God for you. Sister Peoples, the Lord told me to tell you that within the next three months that he's majorly changing something that needs to be changed. It is going to alter something that's going to benefit you. I have no idea what this is all about. I'm just telling you what I hear the Spirit of the Lord say to you even now. Within the next three months, God says he's going to change something that majorly needs to be changed. It is going to alter something. Uh, that is going to uh, that is going to benefit you greatly. That's going to benefit you greatly. Praise the Lord, everybody. Go ahead and invite your followers. Go ahead and invite your followers for those of you that are coming in. Thank God for all of you. Blessings to everybody. So love you and thank God for you. And uh, I so, 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 so appreciate you. Listen, I am going to get right into the word of the Lord. I'm going to get right into the word of the Lord. Uh, I'm not going to, uh, not going to take up uh, too much of your time. At least I don't purpose to take up too much of, of your time. Um, I don't purpose to take up too much of your time. Uh, the Lord may have it so differently, but I don't purpose. Praise the Lord, everybody. I don't purpose to, um, to take up too much of your time. Um, did any of you all hear the testimony uh, concerning the woman of God with the automobile? Anybody hear that testimony? Um, Concerning the woman of God, I gave that about maybe two periscopes ago. I mean, was that was that phenomenal or was that phenomenal? I mean, the woman of God had actually got turned down on an automobile. God gave me a word to give to her to tell her to go back, go back the very next Wednesday that she was going to leave with the car on next Wednesday. You need to go back and hear that because it's crazy for those of you that didn't. God said, give her a word. Tell her I said, go back next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, she's going to leave with a brand new car. She went back on next Wednesday after her credit score had plummeted 120 points. Are y'all listening to me? After her credit score had plummeted 120 points, she went on the strength of a prophecy that she had gotten and left with a brand new car. Isn't God amazing? All because God said so had nothing to do with her credit. I said, all because God said so. She went on the strength of a prophecy that I had given her, and she left the dealership with the brand new car, went on the day that she was prophesied to go. The Lord told me to tell her, don't, don't go back on Monday, don't go back on Tuesday, don't go back on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, or Sunday. Tell her, go back on Wednesday. The woman of God goes back on Wednesday and leaves the dealership with no money down with a brand new car after her credit score had plummeted 120 points. And she's here right now. She's just joining. Blessings to you. Blessings to you, Lady T. She is here right now. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that, that That's what's meant by a sovereign God. You know, if the word sovereign means, it means God does whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it, however he wants to do it, through whomever he wants to do it, and nobody can call him on it just because he's God. Sovereign means that God does whatever he wants to do, and there is no conflict and no barrier that will interfere and intervene when God gets ready to do something for you. Are you with me? I said, when God gets ready to do something for you, there is no angel in hell, there is no man on earth, there is no devil in hell that will be able to stop. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That will be able to stop what God has for you. Whenever God has something for you, 
Are y'all listening to me? I said, whenever God has something for you, I'm not talking about when man has something for you, but whenever God has something for you, there is no angel in heaven, there is no man on earth, and there is no devil in hell that will be able to stop what God has purposed and has promised to you. Hallelujah. 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 Lyrics, I want you to get ready because God is about to favor you to build. I want you to get ready because God is about to favor you to build. I see God straightening up some things and getting some things in alignment. God is straightening up some things and aligning some things. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say that he's going to favor you. I'm talking to Lyrics now. God says he's going to favor you to build. He's going to favor you to build. I said he's going to favor you to build. I see God correcting some things and getting uh, in the spirit, getting some things in alignment, getting some things in alignment. This is a season of alignment for you, a season of alignment for you. God is, I hear the spirit of the Lord say that he's correcting some things and not only is he aligning, but he's also realigning. I hear the spirit of the Lord say he's not only aligning some things in your life, but I hear God says that he's realigning some things in your life. This is a season of alignment. What do I mean by that? Things are about to fall in line, line up on line, precept up on precept. God's going to give you wisdom. God's going to give you insight. Uh, God's going to give you direction. God's going to send the right people to talk to you, to tell you what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, because things are about to blow up for you. I feel that in my spirit now. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. Things are literally about to blow up for you. I'm a prophet, y'all. That's what I do. I prophesy. Things are about to literally blow up for you. They are about to literally blow up for you. God's about to send all of the right people in your life because I hear the Spirit of the Lord say that it's time to go to the next chapter uh, where your living is concerned. Listen, I want to share with you. I want to share with you in public, of course. Uh, hey, Javon. I want to share with you in public uh, what the Spirit of the Lord has so intelligently uh, and intimately shared uh, with with me uh, in in private. Um, I was in the process of readying myself for prayer. I was in the process of readying myself for prayer. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, to tell the truth about it, I had actually been prompted by the Lord to pray. Uh, there are times, of course, when I pray uh, out of my out of my own desire to pray. Uh, there are times that I pray when, when I want to pray. There are times that I pray when I know that, that I have to pray and it is important to pray. But then there are times that I pray because I have been prompted to pray. Uh, anybody in here prays because you have been prompted to pray? Uh, there are times when God will prompt you to pray. There are times when God will prompt you to pray. You don't really have it on your mind to pray. It is not, uh, for the most part, your time to pray. But God inwardly will begin to prompt you to pay to pray. And inwardly or uh, in in your spirit, you you feel the need to pray. Uh, you feel the the necessity. To pray, there is something internally that is actually stirring uh, you to this place, and and of course, uh, this posture of prayer. Um, uh, I walked inside of my place, and the Lord began to prompt me to pray. He began to stir me, me to pray, and uh, upon God prompting me, right before God prompted me, I heard something in the spirit. And this, this was not when I was in prayer. This was right before prayer. Uh, there is something that God gave me right before prayer, but then there was something else that God gave me when I was in prayer. 
Someone said, Prophet, the word you gave me, Stephanie, uh, last week happened just as you said earlier this morning. My God in the glory. Did you all see that? I need you to go to the website and give your testimony. There's a woman of God by the name of Stephanie. She says, you gave me a word just last week. And I just want you to know before all of the people that it happened just as you said it would. Isn't the Lord awesome? Isn't the Lord awesome? My God, I feel glory right now. But but God but God had begun to minister to me. And I want to share with you because there was there was something uh that God shared with me before uh Javon I began to pray. And then there was something else that God shared with me while I was in prayer. Did everybody get that? There was something that God had begun to share with me uh, before I prayed. Re remember, I told you that, that there was a prompting to, play, to pray. There, there was a stirring within the inner depths of my soul to pray. Uh, God had ignited me to this place and posture of prayer. But en route to my room, right before I got there, God said something to me. God spoke something to me. And, and, and right before praying, I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to tell them that I am changing the altitude of the hour. Tell my people that that I'm I'm changing the the altitude of the hour. Tell them that I'm changing the height of the hour. Tell my people that that I'm changing the the elevation of of the hour. Tell them that I am changing the altitude. Now I want you to get this and receive this because this is for you. Uh, it's not for the person that's sitting next to you. It's not for the person in front of you. It's not for the person behind you. It's not for the people that are all around you. This is personally for you. He says, tell them that I am changing the altitude of the hour right before I got on my knees, right before I began to pray, right before I began to communicate and to articulate uh, to the Lord God. God spoke to me and he said, tell my people that I said that I am changing the altitude of the hour. And I want you to have an understanding that when God begins to change the altitude of the hour, Hosea chapter four, verse six, the spirit of the Lord says this, God says that my people are being destroyed and they're being destroyed because of what? Because of a lack of knowledge, not because of a lack of power, not because of a lack of authority, not because of a lack of wealth, not because of a lack of influence or affluence. He says, but my people, God says, are being destroyed and they are being destroyed. Hosea chapter four, verse six, Hosea chapter four, verse six, my people are being destroyed and they're being destroyed, said the spirit of the living God, because of a lack of knowledge. When God said to me that he was changing the altitude of the hour, he says, I, I want you to help my people to understand that when the altitude of the hour begins to change, that when the altitude of the hour begins to shift, that when, when, when the trajectory of, of the hour uh, begins to turn, he says, I want you to help them to understand that it is a bittersweet moment in time. You got to get this. This is what the Lord said to me right before I begin to pray. He says, help them to understand that when that when that when the that when that when the changing of the altitude, that when the hour of the altitude begins to change. God says, I want you to help the people of God to understand that it is bittersweet. Help them to understand that when the altitude of the hour begins to change, it is, it is bittersweet. When the trajectory of the moment shifts to another place, he says, I want you to help them to understand that it is bittersweet. Because whenever God, whenever God, and here's insight, here's wisdom, here's understanding uh, in the prophetic word in which God has given me for you. Whenever God begins to change the altitude of the hour, God begins to change your company. Bittersweet. Bittersweet. 
I said, whenever God begins to change the altitude of the hour, God begins to change your company. And he changes your company swiftly. And he changes your company suddenly. Uh, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 13, uh, right about verse 30, puts it on this wise. It says, let the wheat and the tares grow together. And at harvest, God says, I shall and will do the separating. Are y'all with me? The gospel according to Matthew chapter 13, right about verse 30. He says, let the wheat and the tares grow together. And at harvest time, I will do the separating. Uh, whenever God begins to change the trajectory of, of the altitude of, for the hour, whenever he begins to change the altitude of the hour, he says, I want you to help the people of God to understand that it is bittersweet because whenever I change your altitude, I will change your company. Whenever I change your altitude, I will change the people in whom you are hanging around with. I will either begin to pull you from people or I will begin to pull people from you because the people in whom you are with in the present are not ready and prepared to go where I am bringing you in the future. He says in the gospel, according to Matthew chapter 13, right about verse 30, he says, let the wheat and the tares grow together and at harvest, I will do the separating. I will do the separating. God says, you don't have to separate yourself from them. You, you don't have to pull yourself away from them. You don't, you don't have to alienate yourself from them. You don't have to dichotomize or divide uh, yourself uh, from them. He says, but I will do the separating. That means means God will bring you to this place and this posture in time where he will then begin to pull people away from you. Watch this now. That are not always bad people. They are not ready to, they are just not ready to go with you to the next chapter of your living. I want you to have an understanding that when the altitude of the hour shifts and the trajectory of the moment begins to change and God begins to pull people away from you and pull you away from people, it is not always that they are bad people. Sometimes they are good people, but they're good people that are just not spiritually prepared to go where God is about to bring you. And if God continues to allow them to connect themselves with you, it will hinder you and not hurt you. Uh, for those of us in, in whom remember, for those of us in whom remember, uh, there was a great, great, great man of God uh, by the name of Abraham, the father of many nations. That right when God got ready to bless Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 12, God says, listen, I am about to make your name great. He says, I'm going to bless them that bless you and curse them that curse you. That, that's amazing. God says, I'm going to make your name great, Abraham. I'm going to make your name so great until people who desire to bless you, God says, I'm going to turn around and bless them. I'm going to make your name so great that if people desire to curse you, God says, I'm going to turn around and curse them. That's an awesome awesome anointing when God places that type of anointing on your life whereby when people bless you he blesses them and people curse you he curses them God says to Abraham I'm going to bless you I'm going to put such a an awesome anointing of prosperity upon your life I'm going to put such a great anointing of influence and affluence upon your life until God says for those that bless you I will bless them and for those that curse you I will curse them he said to Abraham I'm going to make your name great I'm going to bless them that bless you, but then I'm going to turn around and flip that script and change that channel and curse them that curse you, and and you shall be and your name, God says, shall be great in the earth. But right before God brings Abraham to this place of blessing him and 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 and, and elevating him, right before God brings Abraham to to the, to this place of, of graduation and elevation, He says, "There's one thing that I need you to do, Abraham." And that is, I need you to separate yourself from your father in whom went by the name Terah, T-E-R-A-H. When you look in the Hebraic, the very name Terah simply means delay.
Terror means delay. Terror means delay. God says, I need you to separate from everything and everybody that has a possibility of delaying your purpose and delaying your promise. I want you to separate yourself from terror. Terror was Abraham's father. One of the most difficult things, and you've got to understand this and you've got to get this, but one of the most difficult things for Abraham to have done was separate himself from his father's house. Uh, he could have easily separated himself from his cousins. He could have easily separated himself from his aunts. He could have easily separated himself from his uncles. He could have easily separated himself from his friends. He could have easily separated himself from his church members, but when God commanded him to separate himself from his own father to separate himself from his own biological father his own biological member to to separate himself from the man who fed him when he couldn't feed himself from the man who clothed him when he couldn't even clothe himself for the man from the man who housed him when he couldn't even house himself you have to have an understanding that that was a very difficult and very challenging moment for Abraham in that season when God commanded him to separate himself from his father's house. God says, I'm about to bless them that bless you, curse them that curse you. I am about to make your name greater than great. But before I bring you to that level, before I bring you to that place, before I bring you and walk you and usher you into that dimension of greatness and prosperity, God says to Abraham, you have got to separate yourself from your father's house. Some of us are in a season where you're going to have to separate yourself from family. You're going to have to separate yourself from friends. You're going to have to separate yourself from friends that have been family to you. Not because they're bad people, but because they are not yet ready to go where God is about to bring you. I don't believe that Terah was a bad man. He was just not ready to go where God was about to take Abraham and God says to Abraham that before I can bring you there, I've got to separate you here. Y'all, are y'all with me? God says to Abraham, before I bring you there, I've got to separate you here. There is a there that God's about to bring you to. But I hear the spirit of the living God say that before he brings you there, he's got to separate you here. The gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13, right about verse 30, Jesus says, let the wheat and the tares grow together, and at harvest, I will do the separating. Many of you are in the process of separating yourself from people who have meant the world to you. Abraham's father meant the world to him. He loved his father. He honored his father. Yet when God got ready to bless him and prosper him, God says, I've got to get you to separate yourself from the one in whom you love and the one in whom you honor. Because the very thing that you're trying to hold on to is going to delay you if you don't release it. Some of you all are holding on to stuff in this season that you're going to have to let go. It is not your choice to let it go. You're going to have to let go. You don't have a choice in the matter because some of the very things that you're trying to hold on to, I hear the spirit of the living God say that it is going to delay you for your future purpose. God says, tell the people that I am changing the altitude of the hour. But tell them that when I change the altitude of the hour, I am going to change their company. He will change your company swiftly. He will change your company suddenly. And the Lord will change your company speedily. That is what the Spirit of the Lord began to minister to me before I prayed. Upon getting on my knees, God showed me something else. God showed me something else. He showed me something else. He showed me something else. Upon getting on my knees, the Lord took me into the spirit. And I saw, as it were, a rocket preparing to launch. I said, God took me into the spirit after God began to minister to me and after God began to speak to me. 
after God said something, he showed me something. After he said something, De Pole, he showed me something. After God began to speak to me and men after he began to minister to me, I remember having gotten on my knees. And, and when I got on my knees, the Lord took me up in the spirit. And I saw as it were, I saw as it were a rocket in the spirit preparing for takeoff. And whenever a rocket, whenever a rocket is preparing, preparing to launch, there are lots of things that has to happen. My God, I feel this in the glory now. There are lots of things that has to happen in a very short span of time. I'm going to say it again. I said whenever a rocket is preparing to launch. Whenever a rocket is preparing for takeoff, there are lots of things that has to happen in a very short period of time. The Lord began to minister to me. God began to speak to me. And as God showed me this rocket preparing to launch or preparing for takeoff, he says, tell the people of God there are a lot of things that are about to happen in a short span of time because I'm preparing them for lift. There are a lot of things that are about to happen in a short span of time because I am, I am, I am preparing them for takeoff. There, there is a lot of things that are about to happen in a short span of time because I'm preparing them for lift off. God told me to tell you to get ready because things are about to happen quickly. They are about to happen expeditiously. They're about to happen suddenly and they are about to happen swiftly. When, when a rocket is in preparation for launch, lots of things begin to happen in, in a very short span of time. Uh, it takes about a tenth of a second for what's called the terrier to ignite and to begin to produce what's called thrust. Now, now thrust is nothing more than the motion and, and the movement of the rocket. Thrust, 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 thrust. It ignites, it ignites. I, you got to get this. You got to get this. You, you got to get this. I, I'm going to say the game because somebody missed it. It takes about a tenth of a second for the terrier to ignite, uh, to, 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 to produce what's, what's called thrust. Then thereafter, the, the, the motion and, and the movement of the rocket begins to pull out all the launch umbilicals. They're called launch umbilicals. Anything that keeps the rocket from moving has to be removed. And if you remember, that, uh, 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 for those of you rather uh, that are intimate with this situation, uh, women, uh, when giving birth to babies, have to cut off what is called an umbilical cord because it is the umbilical cord that keeps the baby attached to the woman. But when the umbilical cord keeps the baby attached to the woman, it, it hinders or restricts the woman's of the baby's freedom. So in order for the baby to have freedom that it desires, the umbilical cord has to be cut. The Lord told me to tell you that every umbilical cord in this season that's keeping you from being free is about to be cut. Everything that's trying to bound you, everything that's trying to restrict you, everything that is trying to restrain you in this season, God is about to cut the cord so that you can have the freedom that God has purposed you to and you can have the freedom that God desires you to. The motion and, and the movement of the rocket begins to pull out when, when it's when it's when it's preparing for launch or preparing or preparing for takeoff. The the motion and and the movement of, of the rocket begins to pull out all of the launch umbilicals. At about two seconds, fins on what's called the boost guidance system deflects 
to cause the entire rocket to spin at about 4 HZ. Now, now an HZ is nothing more than, than a unit derived from time which measures frequency in the international system of units. Y'all, you got to get this now. One hertz or, or one HG, one HZ rather, is one cycle per second. Could you imagine that? One cycle per second. One cycle per second. And I want you to get this and hear this in the Holy Ghost. What causes the rocket to lift off are um, um, unbalanced, unbalanced forces. What causes the rocket to lift off are unbalanced focuses, forces rather. The forces cannot be balanced in order for the rocket to take off. The forces have to be unbalanced. Some of you all have been going through a season where things have been so unbalanced and you didn't understand what was going on and it was because God was about to prepare you for liftoff. He's about to prepare you for takeoff. In order for a rocket to take off, the forces cannot be balanced. The forces have to be unbalanced. My God, I feel glory here, Javon. The forces have to be unbalanced in order for the rocket to take off. Some of you all had no idea why you were going through such an unbalanced season, and it was because God himself was preparing you for liftoff. What causes the rocket to lift off? are unbalanced forces doing the launch. And there, there are two forces that, that come into play doing a rocket lift off. There is what's called thrust that actually pushes the rocket upwards. And by pushing the gases downward, watch this now, in the opposite direction, Weight is the force due to, to gravity pulling the rocket downward uh, towards the Earth's center. So, 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 so when a rocket is preparing for liftoff, there is a part that plays in the equation that tries to bring the rocket upward. But then there's a part that tries to pull the rocket downward. And with these unbalanced forces, it builds up enough speed so that when the rocket takes off, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost now. Some of you all have been in a very un 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 unbalanced season where it feels like something was trying to pull you upward, but something else was trying to pull you downward. And what you didn't know what that was that it was the imbalance of the whole equation. It was the imbalance of the whole entire equation that was preparing you to go higher than you have ever been in your life. God says, tell them that it's the unbalanced situations in their life that are preparing them to go higher than they have ever gone before. It was the imbalanced situations. Then I heard in my spirit, I heard Isaiah chapter 40 right about verse 30. Listen to what it says. It says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They that wait upon the Lord shall remove, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Notice that they don't mount up until they wait. After they have waited, they shall mount up. The rocket mounts up. After they have waited, they shall mount up. After they have waited, they shall mount up. And God told me to tell you that he's about to mount you up. Because you didn't give up. God told me to tell you he's about to lift you up because you didn't give up. God told me to tell you he's about to raise you up because you didn't give up. You could have given up. You could have lied down. You could have thrown in the tower. Are y'all with me? I said you could have lied down. You could have given up. You could have thrown in the tower. 
You could have waved the white flag of surrender, but you didn't. And God said, tell the people that I'm about to mount them up because they didn't give up. Tell them that I'm about to lift them up because they didn't give up. Tell them that I'm about to move them up because they didn't give up. Tell them I said that I'm about to raise them up just because they didn't give up. I decree and declare today, get this in the Holy Ghost. I decree and declare today that this is your season of the mount up. I said, I decree and declare today that this is your season of the mount up. God in this season, just as they do with the rocket and the umbilicals have to fall off before the rocket is lifted up, I hear God saying that he's about to cut ties in this season with everything and everybody who's keeping you from going higher. There are people in your life. There are situations in your life. There are circumstances in your life that's keeping you from going higher. This shall be the season whereby God is cutting off umbilical cords. God's about to pull you away from people and he's about to pull people away from you because I'm telling you that this is your hour of the mount up. Somebody said, prophet, I find it hard to believe because I fought so hard. And I've struggled so long. I have fought so hard. And I've struggled so long. I find it hard to believe that after all this time that I've fought and all this time that I've struggled, that God is about to finally mount me up and raise me up and lift me up. I decree and declare that God is about to mount you up. God's about to raise you up. And God is about to lift you up. This is saith the Lord, your season of the mound up. I don't care how hard it's been. I don't care how tough it's been. I don't care how much you've cried. I don't care how much you've been depressed, how much you've been discouraged. In this season, God is about to mount you up. This is your season. Hallelujah. This is your season. This is your season of the mound up. I don't know where it's coming from, but in this season, finances are about to be released into the hands of those who have been faithful. I'm going to say it again. I said, I don't know where it's coming from, but finances are about to be released into the hands of those who have been faithful. When you're faithful over a few things, God says, I'll make you ruler over many. Some of us are waiting to be ruler over many when we haven't been faithful over the few, but finances are about to be released in your hands. Finances are about to be released in your hands. God's about to deliver somebody from a 30-year-old situation. Within the next three months, you shall be delivered from a 30-year-old situation. I'm talking about a situation. You're here right now. A situation you have been dealing with for the last 30 years. God said within the next three months, you shall be delivered from a 30-year-old situation, a 30-year-old situation within the next three months. Within the next three months, you're going to be delivered from a 30-year-old situation. There is a woman of God here right now 
you wore to work a blue outfit with a white lapel. God told me to tell you that a miracle is coming to your house within the next three weeks. There's a woman of God here right now. I don't know who you are, but I see your outfit in the spirit. There's a blue outfit with a white lapel. There is a blue outfit. There is a blue outfit. You, you, uh, there is a blue outfit with a white lapel. Listen to the Holy Ghost. You wore a blue outfit with a white lapel. The Lord told me to tell you that within the next three weeks, there is a miracle coming to your house. There is a miracle coming to your house. Whoever you, there is a miracle, a blue outfit with a white lapel. A blue outfit, not, not blue scrubs, but a blue outfit. Listen to the Holy Ghost. I didn't say blue scrubs. I said a blue outfit. I see the woman in the spirit right now. I just saw somebody just said, that's me. I heard, uh, listen to the Holy Ghost. Are y'all with me? Don't play with me, y'all. <laughs> I love you, but don't play with me. Listen, listen. I saw a blue outfit, a blue outfit with a white lapel. I just saw a woman of God just said, that's what I had on today, sir. That's what I had on today, so y'all playing with the Holy Ghost. See, talking about blue scrubs. I didn't say blue scrubs. I, the Holy Ghost said a blue outfit. Did he not say a blue out a blue outfit? A blue outfit. A blue outfit with a white lapel. Praise the Lord, everybody. Where's that woman of God? Where's that woman of God? God told me to tell you that within the next three weeks. Y'all don't play with me. God told me to tell you that within the next three weeks, there's a miracle coming to your house. I don't play with this. I'm real with this. Within the next three weeks, within the next three weeks, I know she's here because I just saw her say it. That's what I have on. Within the next three weeks, you wore it to work today, a blue outfit, a blue outfit, navy blue outfit with a white lapel. Within the next three weeks, there is a miracle coming to your house. There's a miracle coming to your house. There's a miracle coming to your house. There is something that you ask God for while standing in your kitchen last night, right at about 10 o'clock, you were drinking water. Right at about 10 o'clock p.m., you were drinking water, and there was something that you asked God to do for you. The Lord told me to tell you promise granted. Am I not, am I not hearing from the Holy Ghost? Oh, yes, I am. I know I am. You were standing in the kitchen drinking a glass of water right at about 10 o'clock. Something you asked God to do for you. And the Lord told me to tell you that which you have asked. Permission granted. Permission granted. permission granted my god i feel something right now i feel something listen this is your season i want you to lift up your hands and tell the lord thank you this is this is your season who's that said wow was the lord talking to you who is that who's that who's that this this is your season of the mount up this is your season of the mount up everything that has hindered you in this season god's about to cut the cords people uh, situation, circumstances. God, you are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Are y'all listening to what I'm saying in the Holy Ghost? Are y'all listening to what? I'm, this is your season of the mount. This is your season of the mount up. Listen, here, here's what I want you to. Do. I want you to go to the website www.prophetmitchell.org. I want you to sow a forty dollar and thirty one cent seed for the season for your season of the mount up. Forty dollars and thirty-one cents. Isaiah chapter forty, verse thirty-one. Isaiah chapter forty, verse thirty-one says that you shall mount up. God's about to mount you up. Go to the website www.prophetmitchell.org, or you can go to the Cash App dollar sign Herm H E R M Mitch M I T C H, and I want you to sow that forty dollar. And 31 cent seed. Forty dollar and thirty-one cent seed. Angie, who's who's Angie Lester? Angie Lester. Angie Lester. Angie Lester. Angie Lester. The Lord just told me 
that that thing you have been worried about, he has already fixed it. That's what God told me to tell you. I'm talking to Angie Lester. There she is. She just said me. I saw your face flash across the screen and immediately you got my attention and God said, son, tell her that I said that thing that she's been worried about, tell her it's already fixed. That thing that she's been worried about, tell her it is already fixed. I said that thing that she has been worried about, tell her that it's already fixed. The thing that she's been worried about, tell her that it's already fixed. There's a woman here, you have a court case coming up within the next two months or so. There's a woman here, you have a court case coming up within the next two months or so that's involving your kids. There is a court case, there is a court case, there is a court case. And, and this case has to do with back money that's owed you. I'm talking about money that you haven't received. There she is right there. She said, me, what's your name, ma'am? Do you mind revealing your first name? Can I get your first name? Can I get your first name? Because I want to speak over your name. There's something in the name. I want to speak over your name. I want to speak over your name. If you don't mind revealing your name, if it's all right, if, you, if it's all right, I want to speak over your name. The Lord just told me that there was a woman here within the next two months or so that has a court case coming up involving her kids because she's owed back, one, back money. And one woman came on and said, man of God, it's me. Where are you, ma'am? Where are you? I need to hear from you quickly because I'm not going to be here too much longer. Are you with me? I need to hear from you quickly because I'm not going to be here too much longer. I want you to go to the website, everybody. I want you to show that Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 seed. Isaiah $40.31. She says, my name is Shanika, but I have a court case with domestic violence in July. Well, you're not the one I'm talking about then. I, I just said a court case involving children. I didn't see a court case with domestic violence. I said a court case involving children. The Holy Ghost didn't make a mistake. Are you with me? Praise the Lord, everybody. I said the Holy Ghost makes no mistakes. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org, or you can go to the Cash app. Go to the Cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-E-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to show that Isaiah $40.31 seed. This is your season of the mount up. Everything that has engulfed you, that has tried to hinder you, uh, God's about to literally cut it off, just as the umbilicals have to fall off, just as the umbilicals have to fall off a rocket and lift off, just as, as the doctors have to cut off the umbilical cord uh, between the woman and the baby that restricts the baby a uh, 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 liberty and freedom. God is about to cut off everything that has restricted you and everything that has restrained you in this season. There are unseen forces. There are demonic forces that have restricted you, that have restrained you, that have kept you from moving forward to that which God has purposed you. This is a season where God is about to cut off the umbilical cords of everything that has restricted you and everything that has restrained you in this season so that you can move forward. There are demonic forces that have restricted you, umbilical cords of demonic forces that have restricted you and restrained you that are about to be cut off in this season so that you can move forward into what God has purposed you and what God has promised you and what God has, has prospered for you. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org, or you can go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to show that Isaiah chapter 40, uh, verse 31 seed. Isaiah 40, I want you to show that $40 and 31 seed. God's about to do it for you. God's about to do it for you. Javon healing is about to come. To someone, I see this. I see this male in your family. I see this male in your family who has been struggling with some kind of addiction. I speak deliverance over his life. Deliverance is about to come. 
I see a male who has been struggling with an addiction. This male is very dear to you. This is not a distant male. This is a male that's very Koroshanda Bahaya. This male is very is very dear to you. I see a male figure. He's not he's not distant. He's not distant. I didn't say she, I said he. He's not a distant male. He's a male that's a male that's very near, a male that's very dear. I speak the delivering power of God over his life. This addiction that has bound him, has restricted him, has restrained him for years, for years, for years, for years, for years. People think he doesn't want to be. He wants to be helped. He wants to be helped. He doesn't have the strength to be. He doesn't have the strength to help himself. He doesn't have the power to help himself, but the power of the Holy Ghost in Nasharabake. Losanda Mahaya Ikababasa Roshebe. The power of the Holy Ghost deliver him now. The Spirit of the Living God fall upon him now. The power of the Holy Ghost deliver him. God do it for him now. God do it for him now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give him the strength that he hasn't had. Give him the power that he hasn't had. Give, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We make the devil and every naysayer out of a liar. In the, I said in the name of Jesus. We make the devil and every naysayer out of a liar. People who said he wouldn't be delivered. People who said he couldn't be delivered. People who said he didn't want to be delivered. We make every naysayer out of a liar. The power of the Holy Ghost. God destroy that yoke in the name of Jesus. I thank you now. I thank you now. I thank you now. God, I believe, I believe in the supernatural. And I thank my God, I feel glory now. I thank you now, God. I believe in the supernatural. I thank you now. I believe in the supernatural. Because years ago, he supernaturally healed me. Years ago, there was a cancerous tumor in my body. Years ago, I went in for an operation. Years ago, there were three doctors that confirmed that the tumor was cancerous. But lo and behold, when they go on the inside to perform an operation, the doctor tells me, Herman, I don't know what happened, but there is no cancer in your body because God is a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. I believe in the supernatural because he's a miracle worker, Javon. Three doctors confirm that there was cancer in my body, but yet when they went in, there was not one ounce of cancer in my body. And my doctor looked upon me and said, this was nothing shorter than a miracle. I said, sir, it was a miracle. I believe in the miracle working power of God. I believe that God has the power and the authority to do what no doctor on earth has the capacity to do. And I decree deliverance. God, I thank you now. I thank you. I thank you. I don't know who this person is, but the next time you see him, lay your hands upon him and out of your mouth decree this, God, thank you for deliverance. I said the next time you see him, lay your hands upon him and out of your mouth decree this, I don't know why, but I felt he was close. She said, my daddy. The word of the Lord knows no distance. 
God says, I sent my word. I sent my word and healed them and delivered them out of all of their afflictions. I sent my word and healed them and delivered them out of all of their afflictions. I sent my word. Daddy, we send a word of healing to you right now. Daddy, we send a word of deliverance to you right now. I command now the streets to let daddy go in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, I command the streets to let daddy go. I command every addiction. Dad, I speak to your spirit now. I command every addiction to free you now in the name of Jesus. God, do it and I thank you. God, do it and I thank you. My God, I feel something. God, do it and I thank you. We thank you in advance. We thank you in advance. We give you glory in advance. We, we magnify you in advance. We, we praise you in advance. We're not going to wait until the battle is over to shout, but God, we shout right now. We shout right now for the deliverance of that young woman of God's father. God, do a miracle so phenomenal. Do a miracle so astronomical that it will make unsaved folk that know him get saved. Do it now. And we thank you now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. There's someone by the name of Lois. I don't know if Lois is actually here. L-O-I-S. I don't know if Lois is actually here. Or there's somebody who knows Lois. L-O-I-S. But there is something that is going on with Lois in the abdominal area. The lower abdominal area. The Lord heal Lois. L-O-I-S. Something internally, something internally, something internally. Is that my Periscope secretary who just said her sister name is Lois, L-O-I-S? There's something, the Lois in which I'm speaking in reference to, there is something that's going on in her body. Something going on in her body. And in the spirit I sense, she said yes. Do you, did you all just see that? There's something, there's something going on in her body. She responds by saying she's been sick. My God in the glory. Isn't the Holy Ghost amazing? I said, isn't the Holy Ghost amazing? I said, there's somebody by the name of Lois. She says, it's my sister and she's been sick. God is an awesome God. Isn't God an awesome God? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God says there's something going on in her abdominal area. <sighs> Lyrics, I feel God right now. I do. I feel, I listen, the glory is so heavy in this place. I said the glory of God is so heavy in this place until it's unreal. Listen, right before, right, before I, right before I say what I'm about to say about Lois, I just heard something in the Holy Ghost in my right ear. God said, tell you that, he said, tell the people that for every level of attack in which the enemy has come at them, I'm going to raise them up just that much higher. My God, I felt that in the Holy Ghost. I heard that in my ear. I, right in the midst of talking about Lois, God interrupted me. He says, tell the people that I said that for every attack, every level of attack that the enemy has attacked you with, God says, I'm about to raise you up just that much higher. You lift up your hands and tell them thank you. But there's something going on with Lois in her abdominal area and God is touching her even now. 
God is touching her even now. God, do what medicine couldn't do and we give you glory. I said, do what medicine couldn't do and we give you glory. Do what medicine couldn't do and, and we give you glory. Do what medicine couldn't do and we give you glory. Hallelujah. How's it? Hallelujah. There's a mother here with a son by the name of Tyrone. There's a mother here with a son by the name of Tyrone. There is a demonic spirit that have attached itself to Tyrone. There is a mother here with a son by the name of Tyrone. A mother with a son by the name of Tyrone. I don't know why, but I sense in my spirit. There is a mother here. With a son by the name of Tyrone. Tyrone is under demonic attack. Somebody says she's here. Oh my God. Who are you, mother? What's your name? What's your name? My God, I feel God right now. I feel God right now. Y'all got to excuse me because the heavens just open. I feel God right now. Tanita, your son is named Tyrone. Tyrone is under demonic attack. There is a spirit that has attached itself to Tyrone. And this is not something that has happened recently. This is something that Tyrone has dealt with in his earlier teenage years. Something that he has dealt with in his earlier teenage years. Something that he's dealt with in his earlier teenage years. And God, she said sickle cell. In his early teenage years, we decree and declare deliverance now. I speak healing now. Purge him. Purify him. Heal him. Deliver him. Set him free. Who can be this accurate, you all? Who, who can be this accurate? Do you all really, do you all think that this is a guessing game? Do you all think this is a guessing game? This is not a guessing game. This, this is the Holy Ghost. Who calls names like that and be that accurate with people who are here but the Holy Ghost? My God. My God. And I witness for him. What's your name? There's a woman of God whose handle is I witness for him. What's your name? What's your name? Go to the website www.prophetmitchell.org. Or you can go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to sow that Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31 seed. $40.31. This is your season of the mount up. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. They shall mount up. God says he's about to mount you up because you didn't give up. He's about to raise you up because you didn't give up. He's about to lift you up because you didn't give up. Where is the woman of God with the handle? I write, I witness for him. I think it is. I witness for him. Okay, I don't know where she is, but I'm going to give her the word anyway. Maybe she fell off and she's coming back. This is going to be a season. 
Oh, it's I write for him? Okay, I thought it was I witness for him. I thought it was I witness. Okay, maybe it's I write for him. This is going to be a season. I write for him. I witness for him. This is the word of the Lord for you. This is going to be a season of promotion for you. This is going to be a season of promotion for you. God told me to tell you that he's opening a door for you and he's opening a door for you right now. This is going to be a season of, prom there you are. Okay, I write for him. This is going to be a season of promotion for you. And I hear the Lord say that he's opening a door for you and he's opening a door for you right now. There is an entrepreneur spirit upon you by which you will own your own. You will own your own. You shall own your own. And I hear the Lord say that he's going to prosper the very works of your hands. God's going to prosper the very works of your hands. God has gifted your hands. And he's going to prosper the very works of of your hands. I'll say it again. God has gifted your hands and he's going to prosper the very works of your hands. The Lord told me to tell you that he doesn't want you to worry about anything in this season. She says, I feel like an owner. That's because you are. You're only feeling what you are. I said, you're only feeling what you are. The Lord told me to tell you that he doesn't want you to worry about anything in this season because God's doing everything. God's doing everything. I want you to go to my website. I write for him. I want you to go to, to my website, www.prophetmitchell.org, and I want you to leave me your web address. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org, and I want you to leave me your web, leave me your, your email address. Got something else I want to share with you, but I'm just not going to share it here, all right? Got something else I want to share with you, but I'm just not I'm not I'm not going to share it here. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Well listen, I'm out of here. But I want you to, I want you all to meet me here tomorrow. Uh Meet me here tomorrow for 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, one hour of personal prophecy, all right? God has a word tailor-made just for you. If I missed you today, I will get you tomorrow, I promise you. If I missed you today, I'll get you tomorrow. I want you to meet me here tomorrow night. I want you to meet me here tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, one hour of prophetic power. And I want to minister to you. For those of you who haven't sown into this anointing, I want you to sow. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org, www.prophetmitchell.org. Or you can go to my cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H -E 